ball. Marshall, Miski and French, of course. And Fields, no slouch either in that respect. No, and again, that's another one of the big questions for Warrington. Where are those tries coming from? As you say, Matty Ashton and Josh Doolis, who's had an outstanding season. Both of those two players who have a significant number of tries for the Wolves are on the sidelines. Wigan, of course, stunned by that defeat at Wakefield last time out as Smith manages to make some room to get the kick in and it dribbles into the arms of Matt Dufty, scorer of that sensational try last time out against the Saints. He looks so much more comfortable at the, the fullback position. So this standoff has been an issue for a number of reasons. One is Dufty's had to play there, it didn't go so well. Look, for those people who remember the Challenge Cup game here, Wigan had a man sent off and just blitzed Warrington through the middle of the field with 12 men. I'm sure Matty Pete will want to be direct. Cade Ellis is back tonight for the Warriors. But that direct through the middle centre of the field, tiring out Vaughan, Cassiano, when he's on the field, was very effective last time out. Here's James Harrison playing at uh, loose forward tonight. There is Vaughan. There's a doubt about his availability for this one as well. But he has made the starting 13. And Drinkwater, his kicking game is going to be crucial. With Williams not available. That first one into the arms of Field at fullback and fullback then links up with winger as Miski powers onto that ball. Huddersfield have taken an early lead against the bottom of the table, still bottom of the table, Wakefield, but closing on the Castle of Tigers, of course, after that victory over Wigan. Dramatic victory, sealed by that uh, Will Dagger extra time drop goal. Wigan just over the halfway line. Three tackles gone this set. And gradually working their way up the field as Kader Ellis plays the ball. He's Brad O'Neill, preferred to Sam Powell these days. Toby King, a danger. Oh, wow, he's lost mistake. that ball. Yeah. Yeah, he has got a good offload. He's one of those compulsive offloaders. When he's one on one, you'd back him to beat anybody, but he's offering it up there in an impossible position. There is a hand in there. It's an attempted offload. It's topping two play by for offload to Toby King. I think that's number 36 for the year. Effective when he gets it right. But my Pete will be desperately disappointed that he's got it wrong there. It just seems to be a, a Wigan hand that helped that ball on its way. John Wells is on the sideline this evening. Evening, John. Evening, Bill. Evening, gents. Yeah, just a quick pitch report. If I, if I may, typical Lancashire summer's day. It's been raining all day uh, for most of the day, certainly. It's dried up just before kickoff. Uh, look, this is going to be a very slippery surface. The ball's going to skip off the surface. You mentioned the kicking game of Josh Drinkwater, the only recognised kicker really in general play from Warrington. Him and Harry Smith, his counterpart in the Wigan Warriors shirt, are going to have a big, big, important task today. I don't know whether Wells is being a bit countyism there. Oh, so Does he not rain in Yorkshire? Har Har Harrogate. Harrogate never rains. Off goes Daryl Clark. Clark, who is in the hooking role this evening. Good yardage made by Clark. And they're well into Wigan territory now at Warrington. There is Danny Walker, Harrison. On it comes to Drinkwater, and Drinkwater taking them on. And Walker quickly in there. Dufty fires the pass. It's coming field to Russell, and Russell trying all he can on the last, and he went close. That was good work from the Scottish international winger. Yeah, and with Sam Tompkins spoke about attacking that Wigan right edge, well, Warrington have certainly done the same here. Dufty taking that short side, again preying on Toby King, who's just a little bit flat-footed. His lateral movement's not great. Catalan took advantage of that, and Warrington certainly looking to do the same here. Toby King, of course, a Warrington player who is actually on loan. But look at oh, that yes. from Warrington on Liam Byrne. Tidy. That's great stuff from Warrington. A good start, nice break from Daryl Clark. Finished off in style in the corner, leaving the ball for Warrington to attack while they're in defence, and that's exactly what they do. It's such a good place to turn the ball over, Barry, isn't it? It's a great place because you can just chalk up your defensive line, you can commit numbers to tackles without the fear of the ball being moved on you. It's smart tactical play to finish in the corner from Warrington, but then you've got to absolutely apply all your effort and energy, and it's Phil Bing Clark, Danny Walker in a tackle, and it's a huge effort to win the ball back. Good wire contingent here at uh, the DWR, but then Drinkwater and Dunson 
get in a tangle and miss that one. And Dudson has to retreat all the way to his 30 meter line to uh, regather that ball. And he's oh. Russell again. Collision, big collision between Liam Byrne and Paul Vaughan off the ball. Clark appealing for a quick play the ball. Here is uh, Matout here, it's uh, Brother Sioni on the losing side. There you go off the ball, oh, there you just see it in the that's corner a of the mark, shot. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, Liam Byrne is a big figure for this uh, this Wigan side. Well, him and even Ethan Havard have been really great for Wigan. They took it to Vaughan and Cassiano, like I said, in that cup match, and that's just a signal of intent, isn't it, from Liam Byrne? Here's Philbin, he looks up for it, does Joe Philbin back in the side. After an ankle injury, and now an opportunity for Harrison, and James Harrison on the short ball gets the first try of the night, and Warrington have started with intent, and that has paid off. They've won the goal line dropout, and they've gone from that, from deep in their own half, to James Harrison powering over for his third try of the season. A lovely short ball setting him up, and the start that Warrington needed. That's exactly what they needed, isn't it? Good defence from Warrington Wolves after a great break from Daryl Clark. Pushing the Wigan side into the in-goal area, getting a goal-line dropout. There was a bit of a flop in backfield. But from this Joe Philbin determined run, stubbornness not to get dominated, you can see he's always fighting and tussling. He has his arm free. And Daryl Clark, who made the break initially, just feet it to the big fella, James Harrison. Well, he just strolls through the gap, doesn't it? Great stuff from Warrington Wolves. And that will do their confidence the world ago. It's great footwork from Phil Bin. An even better offload. And then Daryl Clark, when he's going direct and straight up the field, is really threatening. Two telling touches from Daryl Clark. And Daryl Powell will be delighted with the start from Warrington here. Huge defensive effort that has gifted his side the opportunity to attack Wigan's line. And James Harrison punching a great line. Lovely start here from the wire. Not a great deal Harry Smith could do about that as he faced the six foot four inch James Harrison on the charge. And Harrison made sure of the try. Ratchford made sure of the conversion. And Warrington take a 6 0 lead coming up to eight minutes. Yeah, great from James Harrison. He's. When he's played, I thought he's come up with some big performances, especially those opening 11 rounds where Warrington was so dominant. And it's Philbin, like I said, just footwork and leg drive and determination and will to compete that allows him to get the offload. Clark stays alive, and that's when Darrell Clark's dangerous, when he's over the ad line and just onto a defensive line. Great start here from Warrington. Interestingly, Bill, 82% of the time of this season, when Warrington have scored first, they've gone on to win. So Wigan will be alarmed to concede here, but we'll be looking to dig in. Leeds trailing early on, and Hulke are 6-0 up in that game, and Warrington in front, something they didn't achieve in the two previous games against Wigan this year, which they went on to lose very narrowly. Bill, when I went back and watched that game, you and I called it in the Super League. There's a great offload from Vaughan. Wigan absolutely peppered the middle. Bevan French just lifts. Is it Daryl Clark? Uh, is it Matt Dufty above the horizontal? But what Wigan did is he put a lot of pressure on players like Sam Cassiano, made him defend. Yeah, you can see what he's done. He knows that Dufty's in a difficult position. Great offload, isn't it? From Vaughan. Brilliant, isn't it? Over the top, he's a tall range of player. Everybody's trying to stop his leg drive because he's post. Contact meters are good, and then that ball becomes available. They're the hardest offloads to deal with defensively because your defensive line's retreating. They're assuming that he's going to get taken to ground. Well, he didn't. Similar to Philbin, who came up with an offload for the try. A great, effective offload from Vaughan. We're going to, of course, facing Hull KR in the Challenge Cup semi-finals next weekend, and Brad Schneider has got that debut try for Hull KR. Vaughan has put that ball down, first blemish of what has been a solid start, a solid, solid opening ten minutes from uh, Warrington. Well, there you go, there's Danny Walker with a simple, basic hand-on, and, and I think during the course of a season, during the course of 
a period of time at a club, you, you get connections, you get bonds with players, and you get an understanding of how one another works. Danny Walker is in a different position, he'll have to really fine-tune those skills, but... I, still th I think Vaughan's got to take that. You know, it's easy to sometimes look at the young sort of Danny Walker and say, it's not a great pass, but Paul Vaughan's good enough to take that. Well, it's, uh, it's given Wigan possession, which they haven't enjoyed a lot of in the opening ten minutes of this contest, and they trail by six points to nil. Same scoreline as that at Headingley. And now they're looking to do something about it. So a Wigan side whose form's been, well, as we saw last week against Wakefield last Friday with that defeat, they, they have been a bit hit and miss. Fourth in the table. Could go third tonight. Big enough win. They could, in theory, go second. But their minds might be elsewhere. Meanwhile, Morgan Smith is on the charge. Smith has gone past Dufty. Eventually he's brought down. It's Philbin chasing back. Well, they wanted more attack out of Morgan Smith. They got it there. Here is Bevan French. French comes back. Field comes back on the inside. Slips. And it'll be the turnover. The opportunity goes begging for Wigan. And Field just losing his footing. Wow, Morgan Smith is. He breaks the tackle of Daryl Clark, pins his ears back. He's looking for support. And there's none forthcoming. If he only looked on his left shoulder, Toby Keane was screaming for the ball. Here's Matty Russell. John Wells was saying that the pitch is slippery. It's been raining all afternoon here in, uh, in Wigan. Well, that might play into the hands of Warrington Wolves. You and I were discussing it prior to the kickoff. If, it, if this game goes the way of Warrington, it's going to be a tight one. If it goes the way of Wigan, I've got a feeling that Wigan could blow this game out. They've got to take the chances. Here is Vaughan, he keeps a hold of that one. And then looks to the referee for some sympathy. Is Daryl Clark and Clark testing the Wigan defence. Gil Dudson wants a Wigan on his sixth Super League club, the Cardiff born front rower. Clark and drink water. Likewise, well travelled in uh, Super League and Field eyes on the ball and then works out the space and Field looking to get away. Russell comes back and Field then loses the ball. It was stolen. Little hand in there, a little bit of furtive handwork from uh, Matty Russell. The kick is accurate, but the chase has just got to be timed perfectly, especially with Jay Field. You'll prep all week. But your kick and chase has just and got to be lined up, and if you give him an inch there, he's, he's away. And you are very vulnerable if you're on your own. Ben Curry cannot afford to be one, two, three metres in front of the rest of his teammates, because the footwork, the speed, the agility, both him and Ben French will burn you, won't they? Dangerous. Here's Liam Byrne, the Irish international for Wigan. And Leeds have levelled at Headingley six points apiece in that contest. Is Bevan French and French trying to take him on? Judson clinging on to his shirt collar to stop his progress. But Field and French already threatening set restart signals. So Wigan looking to hit back. Here is Liam Farrell, the second highest Super League try scoring forward in the history of the game. Kieran Cunningham, some way ahead in actual fact. Is Cade Ellis, Farrell on 1 2 1, Cunningham set it at 1 3 8 with his try scoring ability. Oh, they'd love to have him at Saints with James Roby Will that. Here is Liam Marshall, a threat for Wigan. And Marshall tackled 10 metres away. Harry Smith, here is Liam Farrell. Farrell. On to Bevan French, French and Field, Field lobs the ball over the top to Miski, but Russell is there to make the tackle, back it comes to French, three tackles gone, and French, little chip kick ahead, he will chase it, but the fullback Dufty is there, and Dufty has got pace and footwork as well, I'll tell you what, there's some pace out there. I oh, know, Dufty's he's another one, you don't want to be one-on-one -on -one chasing a kick, Bevan French, obviously, mercurial player, kick into the corner. Couldn't quite get there. I and think that was his chip and chase. I think that was his best Josh Adokar impression, wasn't it? <laughs> We've only had 15 minutes and they're trying things like that. But well, that's what you get with French and Field, isn't it? They certainly are individual players and individually brilliant players. 
I do feel if Warrington could just nullify their threat completely here and be squeaky clean defensively, it's going to be difficult for Wigan to score points. You, you said that about defence, we've focused on Danny Walker in attack and his roles and responsibilities. Let's not forget when he's defending, he's defending out wide with no real security around him, his decisions and his technique are crucial. Miski underneath that kick from Drinkwater and the Lebanese international brings the ball back strongly. He's done well since he was uh, brought into the side as Abbas Miski. It's powerful, isn't it? Him and Marshall both bringing the ball back so well. It's so important for your first two carries to be strong and Miski and Marshall always produce a great platform. And this man, Gordon, he's been great. Missed the defeat of Wakefield last week at Wardle. Brad O'Neill now, the 20 year old uh, hooker, just on the halfway line, and he plays the ball. Four tackles gone as Farrell takes the pass. Natalia with the tackle. Fifth tackle, the ball with Harry Smith, and Smith launches it high, high, and across the field. Miski is underneath it, the ball beats him and Russell and eventually goes into touch. No, it does, doesn't. Rackford claims it, and Rackford goes into touch. His well, intentions were good. He had too much time to kick that ball, Harry Smith. But it's as old as the game itself. Don't let the rugby league ball bounce. And it's really nice from Miski, isn't it? Presence of mind to keep chasing it. He could have easily given up on that. Rackford doesn't really have a choice, and it's a great then piece of pressure from Kai Pierce-Paul. It's a fortunate bounce, but the effort from Miski and Kai Pierce-Paul has won Wigan the ball back here. Well, if Ratchford hadn't intervened, Wigan could he well have to. gotten the ball back and no kept choice. it alive. Here is Jake Wardle. Had been ever-present in this Wigan side until his absence last week at Wakefield, and he's playing the ball 10 metres out. Here is Cade Ellis. Philbin down low, James Harrison up top. The Warrington Post just ahead of them. Harry Smith, short pass from him. Shorrocks ball over the top. Miski, and it went forward, says the referee Chris Kendall. And a great opportunity is spurned by Wigan. It's a forced offload, but the decision to give it to Shorrocks, one on one with just drink water in front of him. I'm sure we'll see that again and then. When Wigan feel like Warrington are trying to second-guess that, the ball will go out the back, they'll create the numbers. When Sam Tompkins, our studio guest, talked about them being methodical in their approach, that's what they do. Easy options, short options, and then when the time is right, bang. Well, we've seen Warrington's edges be aggressive. And, go, and, and on this left-hand side, Harry Smith's thrown the ball through a tunnel to Marshall. And another way to deal with aggressive D on the outside is to hit lead runners, so expect to see Shorrocks, like you okay. said, Barry, just hit drink water square on us a lot of times here this evening. So Warrington have head and feed at the scrum and relieved that they've seen off that to Wigan attack. It's Greg Minikin playing the ball, as mentioned already this evening, no Josh Skewlis, no Matty Ashton for... Uh, for Warrington tonight, there is Matty Russell. Russell with the uh, the tackle from Smith is quite high. Here is Daryl Clark and Clark to Metautia. Dangerous, isn't he, Daryl Clark? He's a point of difference for Warrington. Look, we see him running again here. So to Harrison couldn't take the ball and Kai Pierce Paul picks it up. It's another Warrington error. Yeah, that's one from Vaughan and one from Harrison. And I just think they've got to take these. Daryl Clark's gonna run if it's quick. Harrison just didn't look comfortable. He didn't look comfortable at any stage when this ball was coming towards him. He's almost bracing for contact. It's two unforced errors, one from Vaughan, one from Harrison. And that just you feel like we're gonna just growing into this game after such a positive start from Warrington. Yeah, Wigan again taking possession just inside Warrington territory. Warring, uh, Hull KR have gone 12-6 up at Headingley. Leeds, of course, on the charge up the table. The Smith is here. He's Cade Ellis now. Wigan on the charge, looking to level the scores here. First quarter of the game almost con concluded. Smith is here. Is Kai Pierce Paul? Back from uh, an elbow injury, which has uh, kept him out for eight games. 
course, will be an NRL player next year. Kai Piers Paul. Free. Harry Smith, here is Bevan French, stumbled from French, and here is Field, and Field, oh, Wardle loses it. And a, another Wigan mistake, yeah. just a crucial, just when they get with inside the Warrington line. Yeah, both sides probably a little bit sloppy. He never really has control of that, does he, Jay Wardle? He's had an excellent start to the game, He's with a couple of really powerful punches. You spoke about Danny Walker. Danny Walker, who's defending the third defender in there, did an excellent job. That could easily have gone down to three on two. Well, Danny, Danny Walker here, defended boys. two men, pushed off, in. allowed Peter Matauti to Ten go and seconds. make a tackle on Wardle. And that's what dislodged the ball. Smart. Hey, I'm not saying he can't do no, it. I'm not. saying it's a challenge, isn't it? It is a challenge. You've that's got so many other contributing it's, factors. It's the hardest position to defend on the field. That, you've got so many decisions to make. A nice decision there for me. You need to be a good tackler in the middle. You need to make good decisions on the edge. Here is uh, Matty Russell for Warrington. Who, you've got to remember, Warrington made a sensational start to the season with that uh, eight winning, eight game winning run until they met Wigan. And then it all came apart. Only three wins in eight since that defeat at the hands of, of the Warriors. And they've never so far regain the momentum they had in in that game Danny Walker's gonna look for a 40 20 hasn't quite got the legs and field comes across and they but look at that chase run. Yeah, it's, it's like a big run. net it's like five, five players creating a net around one of the fastest players on the pitch that's how you chase a kick two and then it's Liam Marsh with the next sortie for the uh, the Wigan Warriors. And then it's Abbas Miski. Great carry. Strong. Field Marshal Miski. Strong. Field Marshal Miski. <laughs> Sounds like a band. A thought band. Sounds like some high-ranking soldier. Well, that was the intention. But never mind. He said a band. Sorry. I'm just backing you up, Bill. Thanks. Just tangled up. Just tangled up. Here is Shorex, the versatile Joe Shorex. Here is... The ever reliable Marsh. Oh, it's so close. Field storming onto that ball. It just so that's the third handling error. It is, but it's nice. It's a great line, and, and this is where Jay Field doesn't necessarily get the credit he deserves. We, we always see him making breaks, but he's a great support player. He supports players like Liam Farrell endlessly through a game. Doesn't get many of them, and then we talk about the ones where he scores. Well, he's not quite got that one. It could have easily been a try for Wigan. Yeah, let off for Wigan there. I mean, you think about the forward pass over the other side of the field. Miski was, was in space. Already Wigan have had some opportunities. As it is, Warrington still leads by that James Harrison try. That's good work from Kai Pierce Paul. Again. Quickly up on uh, Joe Bullock. Here is Drinkwater to Ratchford. Ratchford. Brought down by Toby King. On the last, and Drinkwater, little kick into the corner. It's a great kick, that. Right into the corner, and Fields brings it back in Fields. And again, another good kick chase. Bodies in front of him, he has no option, Jay Field, just to take the tackle. It's the next two or three tackles where they can gain some advantage. We're going to peel him for a high tackle on... Uh, Abbas Miski, and it's Liam Marshall. Stand Two good carries again, and the rook's just a little bit fractured, and then, no surprise, Liam Farrell's pushing up, putting his hand up to carry the ball. And from a tough Move. position, what a kick from Josh Drinkwater. Wigan won't be disappointed to be playing the ball on their 40-metre line after three carries. Here is Morgan Smithies. Legs driving up to the halfway line, almost. Fifth tackle. And Harry Smith in position to launch the kick, a high spiralling one, Dufty, eyes on the ball, oh, takes it well, <laughs> drifted away from him at the last. Unbelievable take, talk about this, the kick's drifting everywhere, if he was in the second slip he'd be delighted Look with that, footwork. he's out. Look at the footwork, it's like he's doing the cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Dufty, who's been... Solid at the back for Warrington, ever present Third. in all 20 games so Go. far. Huddersfield stretching their lead against Wakefield, 12 points to nil. They lead, of course, the Giants 
full of confidence after their victory over the Catalan Dragons last time out. Just a word about the Catalan Dragons, who are now back home eventually after their titanic performance uh, against St Helens, but it's been quite a journey for them as Ratchford takes the pass and the tackle on Warrington's left edge, fifth tackle, and the ball ben Curry. with Ben Curry who puts a deep kick in, and the ball bouncing away from field and still away from oh. field, and very nearly back into the hands of Curry, the Warrington were offside. Oh yeah, when the ball went so deeply back to Ben Curry, it obviously wasn't intended for them, as he's kicked it then, what he's claiming is he's put his yeah. own kick on side. Yeah. It's just whether there's any Warrington players, I think James Harrison, as the ball lands, is just off with intent. There's not Curry not playing back on side. I, I think he's unlucky, Ben Curry, and he asked the question to Chris Kendall. It's the first manufactured last player, though. It's been Josh Drinkwater, very controlled. Lo and behold, the ball goes to somebody who's not meant to be kicking it. And that is the issue when you've got one player who's solely responsible for kicking. He doesn't quite make it into his hands, or you can get anything. Well, Patrick Mako is on the field for Wigan. Regular on the bench in his second season with the club and Wigan once again with an opportunity to hit back. They trail by six points to nil. His field here is King spinning back in field and into the arms of the Warrington defenders. Ratchford organizing those Warrington defenders because Wigan are threatening here. Here is Harry Smith, Morgan Smithies, and Smithies. Straightforward charge and into the arms of Bullock and Philbin. They're about 10 metres away here now, Wigan. Four tackles gone. Harry Smith. Marshall. Marshall pass. Marshall takes the pass from French. And we said Wigan had the scoring power. And Marshall shows exactly that. The pass from Bevan French. And Liam Marshall gets his 16th try of the season in this Super League campaign. Yeah. And Wigan eventually take their chance. Yeah, well, I spoke about this right edge of Warrington being aggressive. Well, it's Peter Matau here, just came up and in, and he just made it too easy for Bevan French. It's a nice time ball from Harry Smith. He gives it with enough time for Bevan French just to eyeball Peter Matau here. And once he's fixed eyes on Matauti, and Matauti is always coming in, his instincts are aggressive. That creates a three on two. I love this from Bevan French. Eyeball Matauti, get him interested. Flat pass on the money to Marshall. Great try from Wigan, and the first time that they've executed something here in this game. Well, that's four in a row. Liam Marshall has scored it. In fact, it's his seventh try in the last seven in Super League. Joint third, well in fact I think he's gone ahead of Matty Ashton now in the Super League try charts. Ashton not available tonight, Harry Smith. Oops. Goal kicking has been a bit hit and miss, 61% success rates this season. 51 goals to his name, this to tie the scores up. Liam Marshall's try, converted by Harry Smith, six points apiece, the scoreline, let's go down to John Wells. Yeah, real value there, Marshall finishing, but it's Bevan French, just wanted to draw your attention to this, we know him, don't we, as a, a really unpredictable athlete, wing-heeled, but it's the try assists, that is his 18th for the season, moves him into tied third in Super League with that, this is multifaceted player. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice from Bevan French. The timing of the ball from Harry Smith is delightful. You can often, as a half-back, take that ball too far, and if you do that, French gets flattened by Matautier. Just playing a little bit earlier, allowing Bevan French to get Peter Matautier interested. He's smart play from Wigan, and Bevan French, beautiful pass on the end it's of it. It's the perfect pass, the perfect weight, the perfect accuracy, like a bullet hitting its target. Excellent work. Here is Kai Pierce Paul making his uh, 50th Wigan appearance tonight in his brief career in Cherry and White coming to an end at this campaign. Joe Shorrocks. Two, Joe up the ball! Get square! 
We're, we're going Seen to. him just about everywhere on the pitch for Wigan this season. Patrick may go now. It's a big part of the game now for Warrington. Oh, Ten down. minutes to go in this first half. They started so well, but since then, Wigan, just like this, just been getting on the front foot. It's a one-on-one -on -one steal. What a play. We're talking about a big period of the game. Well, Daryl Clark's come up with a blinder there. Yeah, he's nicked that ball off. Liam Farrell and he's put Warrington in a great position here. Two, oh, smart, isn't it? Smart. Liam Farrell's just not expecting it. Clark. His bullet now. Bullock with a strong charge. Once to the Wigan Warriors, Joe Bullock. Daryl Clark. Danny Walker. Philbin on it comes. And here is Metautia now. The pass from Dufty and Metautia using his strength. And there's plenty of that. Just a few metres away from that Wigan try line. Minikin, Danny Walker, Sam Cassiano, big hand in the mush and Morgan Smithies. Cassiano, though, brought down. Warrington being kept at bay at the moment by the Wigan defence. Drink water on it goes to Dufty. Dufty to Rackford. Rackford runs into the arms of the Wigan defence, and that will be the turnover in the corner. It's stout defence from Wigan, isn't it? Not too many questions asked by the Warrington side, but a big introduction. Sam Cassiano, as I mentioned, he had a torrid game when Wigan took Warrington on at Hellowell Jones, and the last time we saw him on Sky, let himself down badly with his discipline. So I'm expecting a big game from the big man. Yeah, he's one of the players that Daryl Powell would have rested, would have got out of his team a few weeks ago if he'd have had personnel, well, he did that last week. It's a good motivation for him to be great here tonight. He's talking about Sam Cassiano, what's the Catalan Dragons, and going back to the Catalan Dragons' journey home today. Apparently, they almost ended up in Portugal instead of Carcassonne. <laughs> because, uh, well, a slight mix-up up at the airport, not their fault, and they almost uh, set off for Faro. Get a bit of Vino Verde and then we'll be right. Considering their game finished about 10 o'clock last night, they got back to Perpignan 6 o'clock this evening. It's 35 degrees, Bill. I don't feel sorry for them no. once. Or and they got the points as well. Obrigado, they said, on the way up. <laughs> They're in France. <laughs> if they'd have gone to Portugal, <laughs> they'd have said, Abracadabra. <laughs> here is Dufty, then, for Warrington. Six points apiece here. And that ball has been stolen, says uh, the referee. Yeah, just three Wigan players in the tackle. I think it's Minkin turned his back. Just turned his back. I think it's O'Neill's just, just got an arm on him. Oh, he tries to offload though, he doesn't he? Does, yeah. It's, it's a tough call, is that? Yeah. Warrington won't mind. They need a bit of luck, don't they? <laughs> We've As I said, time. if this game stays tight, I, I, I fancy the chances of Warrington because of the way that both sides play. Just drink water with those decisions, he's got to be fearless and take this Wigan side on. If we can get in front, the way that they play, think clear, they act clear, and you can see the speedsters having a field game. Bullock going across the field for Warrington. Cassiano going straight up the field. And they're 20 metres away. Here is Walker, James Harrison, scorer of that early try for Warrington. Cancelled out by Liam Marshall's try. Daryl Clark, Bullock on his shoulder. Just to the right as those uh, Wigan posts. Here is Clark. Clark taking him on himself, and Daryl Clark has caught a nap in there. And that was Daryl Clark at his brilliant best. He set his sights on that Wigan line and they were powerless to stop him. Daryl Clark, second of the season, that's all for him, but a crucial one. Well, a little bit fortunate for Warrington after this was ruled a penalty. Craig Minikin turns round, tries to offload, but it doesn't matter to Warrington. Just look at Patrick Mago on goal line defence. He's only ever looking at the person he thinks will get the ball. He's not even looking at Daryl Clark. Defend the threat. The threat is the ball, and it's Daryl Clark.
and he's clocked off for a second, and that's what we're going to make you do. It's a bit naive as well, because if you've watched Super League and you've played in Super League for a long time, you know near the line, Daryl Clark's going to jump out laterally, and he's exactly what he's waiting for a defender to do, to get off task, to go and try and deal with something else. As soon as Mago's hips sort of turn towards that sideline, and Daryl Clark, Daryl Tan, he just takes it all the time. Poor defensive read from Mago, leaving... Lynn Farrell posted. Landmark drive for Daryl Clark, his 50th in Warrington Colours, and his first since uh, the game against Leeds back in February. Started, and he's been well, lively, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Yeah, he's he and he, well. Liam Farrell won't be pleased because he's stolen the ball off him and he's strong footed in there, hasn't he, for that try? I think back to the first couple of minutes, the break that he made midfield for Warrington got them on the front foot. That's what they need, they need a leadership team to step forward and grab this game by the scruff of the neck. Stefan Ratchford with the attempts. Top goal kicker in the competition so far this season, Ratchford, and that's why. 12-6, Warrington ahead, half-time approaching. Yeah, Darrell Clark's had a bright first half, and you just see Mago, look, he leaves Liam Farrell with a, with a thankless task, a difficult task. Darrell Powell will be delighted. He'll be delighted with Darrell Clark and some of the damage he's causing out of dummy half. For me, he's been Warrington's best player with the ball. Everything exciting that's happened for Warrington has come through him, and he's put another try on there. He was involved in the Harrison try, involved in that try. Scores one. Half time at Huddersfield, and they are 16 0 ahead against Wakefield. Could the Giants make a, a surge up the table and fulfill expectations? Huddersfield, a hope they are. Meanwhile, 16 6 up at Leeds, who had been on the charge. once more James Harrison and the Warrington supporters away to our left in good heart as well they might be might be with uh, 36 and a half minutes gone and their side ahead Josh Drinkwater with a, a teasing kick for Fields and Fields gathers it by the sideline Sean O'Loughlin a Wigan assistant coach on the sideline Sean what's your impression of the uh, Wigan performance so far in this first half? Um, probably, I don't feel like we've settled into the game quite yet. We've, um, I think they put us under pressure right in the middle and we've, we've not probably handled that the best. Um, but we, I felt like we got a foothold back in it towards that, um, that last 10 minute spell. Uh, we just conceded there, so it's, yeah, we need to tighten up our defence, definitely tighten up around that middle and then um, hopefully pull some points. Thanks, Sean. Cheers, thank you. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Tighten up in the middle and score some points. Like it. Leeds have hit back. 12 points to 16 as Smith breaks and Smith is onto Farrell. Farrell onto Wardle. Wardle has got Marshall outside him. He doesn't need him. Ball back on the inside to French. This is a superb try. What a try that is. And Jake Wardle, who missed last week, back to open up the Warrington defence and create the try for Bevan French, his 13th of the season. That's great, it's great from Wigan, it's last play, moving the ball. It's fantastic from Harry Smith, we try and apply some pressure to him. And once, it's Sam Cassiano, if you're coming out the line, him and Harrison come out the line, come up with something, not just fresh air. And it's Wardle who gets the ball. It's patient from Wardle, it's speed from Wardle, and a finish from French. But just look, Harrison and Cassiano not quite connected. That creates an opportunity. It's nice hands. And it's this is great from Wardle. Once it's with French, it's all over. Support player extreme, isn't it? But Harry Smith, what about the reactions from him? Talked about thinking clearly. Bevan French, you can just see him on the chart for the top try scorers in Super League. Well, Harry Smith sees the two big bodies in front of him and knows somewhere there'll be a little bit of space. Yeah, he takes it and takes the opportunity. And well, Wigan could well go in. In uh, sorry, locked up on the scoreboard. I think the better side of that first half have been Warrington Wolves. 
that Wigan have taken the chances. And this is important, isn't it? Harry Smith, look, he, he's at 60% kicking goals this year. And look, it's unavoidable to talk about it. These are big moments in tight games. Look at the game last night, 14 points to 12. Kicking is important. Now this, you would assume, is a formality. 61%. That was going to be picky. Okay. He's picky, isn't he? Well, he's on form tonight. He does have. I mean, he, when he made uh, his England debut back in April against France, he kicked nine goals in that game, and he scored a try. Yeah, we see him here. This is lovely play from him. Cassiano and Harrison not connecting, and that's lovely hands from Smithies. Farrell knows just to shovel it on because Wardle's got to. Great dummy and French up the field supporting both him and Field in the frame there. Brilliant try, just exactly what Sean Wilson said, wasn't it? It's just got some points, well, they have, well done. <laughs> what a try machine, Bevan French is. 72 tries in 79 appearances in his uh, career, British career. He's got speed, but it's his anticipation. He anticipated that break, he anticipates where the action is, and he always arrives at the right time. 12 points apiece, final minute of the first 40, and it has been a exciting 40 minutes between these two. Wigan fourth in the table, Warrington fifth, little chip kick ahead of French, oh, saw the opportunity, trying to finish the first half with a little bit of magic, and so nearly pulled it off. Oh, he overhit it. <laughs> That's the second chip and chase, isn't it? It's a good job Matty Russell got himself in the way then, because Bevan French would have collected that ball, and he is in the mood tonight. Warrington beware. Bevan French has brought his box of tricks with him for this one. Scoring the final try of the first half, four minutes after Daryl Clark had put Warrington in front. And Matt Pete will head down towards the uh, dressing room to talk to his side and plan for what we reckon will be an enthralling second half. 12 points apiece at the break. Thanks very much, Bill. A flying start to the half for the Warrington Wolves, but it was certainly the Wigan Warriors who finished with a flourish. Bevan French's try at the end of a half in which Daryl Clark shone in the absence of George Williams and Maddie Ashton for the visitors. We'll discuss it all in the company of Phil Clark and Sam Tompkins after this. So I think today's his opportunity to prove why he is the best man. Over 80 minutes, and that's probably a big thing. Yeah, well, the nine jersey on a permanent basis may be for Daryl Clark at a different club in 2024. That's all to come. We have 40 more minutes here. Uh, we had a split in the camp beforehand. Sam Tompkins, you went with the Warren Wigan, with the Wigan Warriors. Phil, you went with the Warren Wolves. Anyone Warriors. changing? No. I, I might as well stick. <laughs> I do think we're going to win, but I'll stick a one. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant on the street. <laughs> get off the fence. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, let's get back to our commentary team for the second 40 minutes here. That's uh, standing by is John Wilkin, Barry McDermott and Bill Arthur. Well, Warrington have won only on one of their last seven League and Cup visits to the DW Stadium. Phil Clark sitting <laughs> firmly on the fence. Well, he didn't, though, did he? Because no, he said, I think we're like going to man already. I think we're going to win, but I'm sticking with Warrington. He's, he's got both horses. Back in 2021, Jake, Jake Mamo scored a hat-trick that helped Warrington to a 40 points to 14 victory. It is tight here as the second half gets underway. 12 points apiece. And Warrington get their hands on the ball at the start of the second half. The, the big thing for Matty Pete, they made six errors, Wigan, in that first half. And if you want to tie a Warrington out and get the worst out of people like Daryl Clark and the Warrington forwards, just compete with them and, and be tidy with the ball. I think Matt Pete will be demanding for, for Daryl Powell. Look, he'll really want his side to push on here. They've taken a bit of the form from last week into this game, but they certainly need some improvement because Wigan look dangerous, don't they? Every time that they've had some possession or periods of possession, they look like they can score points. Yeah, Bevan French in particular has obviously got the taste for this uh, Warrington defence. It's it's dried up, the clouds are still dark and looming over the DW Stadium, but the rain has, has let up. 
As Sam Cassiano drives Warrington up to the halfway line and sees off Liam Farrell on his back. And then Drinkwater's kick over the heads and into the arms of Field, who scampers across the field and then runs into James Harrison, filming there to lend his support. Warrington gone off the boil, slipped down the table, top of the table they were when they set off like a, an express at the start of the season. And, and they're fizzled. down to fifth, fizzled, is that the word you're going to yeah, say? and I think they've fizzled out in this game, haven't they? They have the, the lion's share of the opening 30 minutes and dominated Wigan, particularly in the middle. And I feel certain that if they can get some decent field position, spend some time to our left as we're looking, and then just create some second phase with some good offloads through big Sam Cassiano, etc. Oh, this game is there for them to take. Here is French. This time it's a more conventional kick, and it's straight into the arms of Matt Dufty. And Dufty then invites Matty Russell to have a run, and Russell goes across the field and almost, almost found a gap. Farrell just did enough. And yeah, we spoke about Miskin Marshall, how effective they are. Well, Matty Russell's done a great job in tough circumstances for Warrington when they've not been playing so well. He's consistently been their best ball carrier coming out of their half. So difficult to deal with. I know from my time playing with him at Toronto, incredibly difficult to tackle. He did make a couple of appearances for Wigan back in 2012. And of course came here from uh, Toulouse, where he was last year, for his second spell in Warrington Colours. Go for it's Matautia playing the ball. Cassiano, drink water, drink water on it, comes to Rackford. There is Russell. Russell seeing the thread ahead of him, but loses possession. Brilliant defence. Knocked on a good defence from Wigan. It's brilliant from Wigan. They watched the ball, kept the shape, and look at the players rush towards where the danger is. Abbas Miski again holds up Warrington, not allowing him to get down Matty Russell. And he has no option just to throw that ball anywhere. Well, Bevan French's speed actually gets Toby King out of a spot of bother against Let's Sam go, Tompkins down, mentioned before the game. Toby Let's King, just, just a, a poor read there. Head in. Let's go, Joe. Ball the speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who's also the RFL president, actually did the half-time draw here at the DW Stadium from Westminster to the DW. That ball has been lost and it's been stolen. Says... Referee Chris Kendall, Darrell Clark looks bemused. Well, we wondered whether Warrington would recapture the fizz. How do they do that? Richard Marshall on the sidelines, Darrell Powell's assistant. Richard, what's the priority? Hi, Bill. Um, yeah, I just thought we had a really good first half in terms of competing and the energy battle. Um, we just clocked off a couple of times and obviously they scored a couple of tries. I think our discipline, we're just giving away a penalty. I think our discipline is key and, and where we turn the ball over. Well, Wigan on the attack. Richard, congratulations on the degree, which I think you achieved today, didn't you? Oh, yeah, thanks very much for that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can get a win and I can really celebrate. Thanks, Richard. It's Wigan, though, on the attack. And it's with Wardle. Third. Oh, no, go! And Wardle playing the ball, about 15 metres out for the Wigan Warriors, who are looking to strike first in this second half with French. And French, real box of tricks. Looks left, looks right, but eventually is brought down. The Wigan supporters that end. Didn't like the tackle. It's Cassiano on the inside of the line. He, he sends Marshall. Discipline. But it was Marshall coming from the far wing. Let's not forget he's the left winger. So he's come all the way across the field to run a support line. Cassiano is just threatened by his presence. Pulls him down. Bevan French looks for, for the life of him that he's going to play to him. Cassiano buys it. But unorthodox play there from Wigan. Drawing Marshall off his left wing. All the way over to this right hand side to create a number. And a penalty here for Wigan which they are going to kick for goal. Richard Marshall, it was one of the things he talked about straight away. Discipline with and without the ball. They forced over the sideline when Matty Russell had no option other than to throw the ball back inside because of good defence. Not necessarily an organised defence, but good reactions defensively. Richard Marshall, Ryan Sheridan, Daryl Powell will have all have said the same thing. Let's not give them Cheap metres, easy ball, and in this instance, a shot at our goals. And 
this to give Wigan the lead for the first time, looking to make it three from three. Harry Smith, which he does, and Wigan nudge in front, 14 points to 12. Just a couple of lapses from Warrington's big men. We saw Harrison and Cassiano just clock off on the last play. Harry Smith took advantage. Matt Beetle, we delighted with this side start to this second half. And these big guys, Cassiano and Harrison, just got to stick on task because you start getting that wrong, and that's when you get in this spiral downwards of energy and you start making more mistakes. Warrington having made their best ever start to a Super League season with that eight win run. Looking to recapture that momentum which has deserted them. Oh, and that Kiari Pierce Paul has uh, left Philbin on the deck. Strong run from Kai Pierce Paul. Time off. Philbin felt that. He's a good player, Kai Pierce Paul. I think he'll leave a big hole when he leaves Wigan. He can play back row or centre. He's got a good offload. And you've just seen what kind of punch when he carries with force, he can deliver. Let me know if he gets off. Uh... Yeah, it's a massive run up off kickoff. I mean, it's the the most speed we have in any contacts in our game. Actually, probably one of the most risky situations in terms of injury is kicking off and somebody ripping the ball back. It's the most entertaining part of our game. I'd hate to see it gone. Yeah, Kai Pierce Paul really taking some momentum oh, into yeah, that collision. Ball, and that's the intensity it's that Wigan can go to. Yeah. I just don't see Warrington in this last six, seven, eight weeks being able to get there. When, if we want to go there, I don't know if Warrington can, can stay with him. Make sure you play it, yeah. Concerned for Daryl Powell. Huddersfield in control, well in control of that game against bottom of the table. Wakefield 28 points to six. It's like back-to-back -back wins for the Giants after their victory in Perpignan, heading for a victory against Wakefield. Philbin out on the ground and having attention. Let's go down to the John Well, to the John Wells, who is closer to the action. <laughs> yeah, there's, I'm sure there's more than one, Bill. Yeah, just a, a short one on HIAs. I've been having a discussion with coaches and doctors this week. Last night, you had two failed HIA uh, assessments uh, with James Roby and, uh, and Mark Percival. St. Helens significantly disadvantaged there with in, in terms of available numbers to come on the field. You know, should Joe Philbin fail his HIA here, the Warrington Wolves and Darrell Powell will be operating with 16 men. It's a true 17-man game these days, and currently the 18th man is only activated on a third failed HIA. Now, I'm wondering whether the, the lawmakers in the game might look at this, you know, given that exposure to additional minutes for the remaining 16 men in the team is a really significant disadvantage. We're really pleased to see Philbin uh, being sat up right now, but a real concern for Daryl Powell. Just just food for thought there for the game moving forwards. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I agree, agree, agree I more. Agree. It's just, it, uh, HIA is more common. We're looking to protect the welfare of players. Any head contacts are really scrutinised now, so we are losing players to head injury assessments. If we've got an 18th man, use them. And I Get do think on. it's different as well if it's a foul play, HIA, oh, definitely, then yeah. the player that goes down, the team is affected significantly. I think it should be a, a case of if it is foul play, you can use that 18. Interestingly, before this game, we had the uh, academy game between Wigan and Warrington that played with the new experimental laws, yeah. the, the low tackle. I don't like it myself. It's a, mis like it's, it's a misunderstanding. Let's look at this. It's a misunderstanding of, of what knocks us out. That's like, not a high tackle, no, is it? No, but it, we, we, we misunderstand. We get knocked out tackling. Yeah. And, and it has very little to do with tackle height. Very but sometimes rarely. the lower you go, the, the more likely you are to catch a knee or a hip. I got knocked out on hips and knees more than I ever got knocked out. Joe Philbin's just been knocked out tackling. We're so concerned with hitting ball carriers high. Well, it's defending that's dangerous. I don't know, changing the tackle light is just an absolute red herring for our sport. Well, that's yeah. what sort of, even an experienced campaign like James Roby can get it wrong occasionally. You yeah. just can't the, take the, the risk place. out of the game, you can't take the risk out of the game. Well, the risk for Warrington is that Wigan might build up ahead of steam here and run away with this game. Warrington really needs to be tight now. Set restart signals. And 
Wigan in possession. Just inside Warrington territory as uh, Farrell plays the ball. Here is Kai Pierce Paul. It's a big carry as well. There's some real intent with him, not just Lord, not just carrying the ball, but he made two big defensive efforts when he came on the field. <laughs> they can't get him down to the Wigan fans. He's got the longest legs in the world. And on the back of it, Wigan coming forward with Field. Field invites Marshall to come inside. Marshall trying to duck under the challenge of Danny Walker. Walker stuck to his guns. Three tackles gone. It's with Farrell. Field, but Ratchford does well there, and Ratchford almost steals the ball in the process. Still 20 metres out. Smithies, on it goes to Mago. Mago. Good drive from Patrick Mago. Cassiano, Harrison, Walker. Trying to stop him, but he's edged Wigan closer on the last now. Smith, they're running it. Field short ball for Wardle, and that is a great try from Wigan. Built on the back and some solid, solid drive with the likes of Kai Beers Paul involved. And Wigan put it all together there. Well, that's a composed Wigan. Straight after Warrington, give away a six again. Those six tackles, you could visibly see everybody. In a Wigan shirt, turning at each other, giving each other the nod. We know what we're doing, we know what we need to achieve, we know what we want to achieve. Let's just grind into it. Here's Kai Pierce Ball with a strong run. His determination, his stubbornness not to be put down. You can see three defenders and all the defenders around that play the ball can't focus on what they've got to do next. Because as we've said already, you've got to defend the threat. Beautiful short pass there. Jay Field just invites the centre, Jake Ward, into the gap. He almost, as soon as he sees Peter Matauti in front of him, his eyes light up, and it's a great start to the second half by Wigan. And really, it's self-inflicted damage by Warrington, who had the D word rammed down the throat at half-time. Got to keep your discipline. Well, that's nowhere near good enough for the Wolves. No, 12 points apiece it was at the restart, and Wigan has dominated the second period so far. Early days yet, but gone ahead for the first time with Harry Smith's penalty. Wardle's try, and now another conversion attempt for Smith, looking to keep his record going in this game. Three from three, four from four, and Wigan taking a grip on this game now. Yeah, it's been great from Wigan. Fantastic sort of growth into this game. Look, it was Warrington who started it exceptionally well, and that try on seven minutes. But 28 minutes, Wigan got back into it. Warrington struck back. How big was that try on 38 minutes just before half time? And then we see that solo try on 49 minutes from Wigan. Maybe what's more important is what comes between now and the end of the game for sure. But Wigan. We'll be delighted to be first on the board here. Yeah, half an hour to go. And have Warrington got a response? They need to rein in this uh, Wigan side. They need to rein in this guy, Kai Piers Paul. Single handedly just raised the intensity of the game, hasn't he? Just with direct carries, been difficult to deal with. But you can't get a full blooded shot at him because you are concerned about that offload, those long levers he's got. Arms and legs are so difficult to deal with. Some story that, isn't it? From the Croydon Hurricanes yeah. to the Newcastle Knights in the NRL via the Wigan Warriors. For Kai Pierce Paul, still only 22 years of age, he'll be journeying with Will Price, another prodigious Super League talent. It's been a tough year for him, though. I don't think he's really hit his straps this year. He's had a bit of injury, bit of. 40 20 attempt from French, just couldn't get the angle right. Shy, wasn't it? Yeah. French just spotted the winger up on the end of the line. Nice you, don't, kick. you don't think KPP has, it, has hit his straps? I don't think so. This year, I think he's shown in the last maybe 20 minutes of the game that how difficult he is to deal with and how difficult he is when he when he's on form. You know, if he's in form, he's not on the bench, is he? He's not on the bench as a starter. So I think that's a reflection of where he's at. But, but without doubt, his performance here tonight has been beautiful. Another point you make, Bill, and we, we often get duped into thinking you've got to play for Wigan St. Pat's or you've got to be born and bred as a rugby league player to make it to the top. We should look at other sports. We just need players 
who have got a little bit of something, they've got an athletic ability, they're brave, and we can teach them this game, and that kid's proof. 18 all at Leeds between uh, the Rhinos and Hull KR. Hull KR, Wigan's opponents in the Challenge Cup semi-finals next weekend. St. Helens taking on the Lee Leopards. Cassiano, short ball to Paul Vaughan. Three tackles gone this set for the Warrington Wolves as Daryl Clark, who was the main man really for the wire in the first half, looks to offload it. Well done, Dufty, to pick that ball up. And the lads talked about it at half time. If he's going from dummy half, they're in front. I think that's his first dummy half run. And it was a risky offload off the back of it because he's trying to manufacture something. Kai Pierce Paul's tackle on Danny Walker, important there. The kick into the corner. Miski goes up for it. A good take, Wigan supporters wanting a penalty. Yeah, he's lucky. Matty Russell, well, the refer referee said it was a contest for the ball. I'm not sure, I think they've been... No, he's got his arms round, doesn't he? He might be trying to stop himself falling. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Warrington looking to put the pressure on now to stop Wigan making yards this set. Marshall runs into a solid Warrington wall there. Vaughan leading the tackling. Brad O'Neill. Here is Bevan French. Junior Semba comes back in field. Another 19-year-old on the bench for the Wigan Warriors. And a very talented player making his sixth substitute appearance of the season. As the ball travels downfield and into the arms of Matt Dufty. And Dufty will try and run this back and gets away from the first challenge. It's a nice kick from Harry Smith. He's forced to kick from a bit deeper than he'd like. Sports are now on the 40 meter line, just get an opportunity to start just winning field position. And it's what they need because without George Williams in the team, without Ashton in the team, you know, without Thewlis in the team, they need something. And I think they need to get as close to this Wigan line as possible because Williams might break a game open. I'm not sure who else. Barring Daryl Clark, maybe can do that. There is Clark, and here is Drinkwater. Drinkwater nicely batted onto Ratchford, but Miski there, and so too Toby King. And they can't make any progress on the last, and they're still inside their own half as Drinkwater hurriedly gets the kick away in field, waiting for that ball. Then comes across the field and finds, looks to find Marshall, and then takes the tackle. Marshall. Gives himself up if they connected there. I was just going to say that if that pass is made, you can see him right under the hedges, Liam Marshall. Such was the ferocity of that carry or attempted. Oh, I, I just thought, Rob, Marshall forces Fields' hand. Field knows what he's doing there, give him time to He's just committed get... to it though, Wilco. No, he but, knows what he wants. No, but Marshall, if he's just more patient there and times his run and gives Field time to do something to the defence. I think it's on, I actually think Wardle was on even further wide. Harvey Hill playing the ball, the 19-year-old making his 10th Wigan appearance, Harvey Hill, and he's been impressive in the other nine. Here is Harry Smith and Farrell, and it's Farrell with a little kick into the middle of the field, French chasing for all his work, so too was Miski, so too is in December, but Dafty gets away from all of them and then finds Rashford. Eventually it's French who makes the tackle. Here's Matty Russell now, and Russell is so brave. I think Warrington need to speed this game up. If they're going to play the, the style that they enjoy with the offloads and the ad hoc, they need to play at a high tempo. At the minute, Warrington are controlling, sorry, Wigan are controlling the tempo of the game. That's not what they need, is it? They keep the ball alive, it's Dudson. Dudson who picked it up. Wigan fans appealing for a knock on there. Nothing coming their way. Dudson limping as he plays that ball. Here is Vaughan. That's great defence from Farrell. They've done a great job on him. How many games have we seen Warrington, especially at the early part, where Paul Vaughan leads every aspect of the metrics that we gauge the game on, but they've handled him every time he's had the ball. And I also think for Warrington, look, they win rooks, and then Daryl Clark can take advantage of it. And like I was saying, when George Williams is in the team, winning a rook can lead to points. At the minute, 
there's only really Daryl Clark can take advantage of that, so I agree they need to speed the game up. It becomes a bit one-dimensional for them. Tell you what, you get the feeling that Warrington are clinging on. Oh, Miski has lost that one. Oh, that's but when Field gets the ball, when French gets yeah, the ball, yeah. when Marshall gets the ball, there's a sense of panic. It's this anxiety, isn't it, as a, as a player? When you're in front of somebody who's ten times faster than you, you're looking at them thinking... Ten times? <laughs> ten, well, literally ten times in my case. I can only think back to, you know, tackling somebody like Jason Robinson. You didn't dive in on him. What you did is you presented a line in front of him. Sometimes that hesitation is what they're looking for. Field and French, all they're looking for somebody to be sitting on their heels, and then that's it, they take this advantage of it. a mistake from Wigan, the first mistake in the second half. They made six in the first half, and this is what gave Warrington a leg up in that first half. Wigan just couldn't get it together. Yeah, Miski failing to control the ball. Huddersfield cruising towards an emphatic victory there. Harry Smith all over Matautia. No set restart signals. So, Huddersfield, have they finally found their mojo? Victors in Catalan last weekend. And big win against Wakefield. Dufty, here is Ben Curry, his 250th Warrington appearance. Ratchford, the ball bobbling into the hands of Drinkwater. Gil Dudson. Dudson. His progress stopped about 10 metres away. Four tackles gone. Coming up towards the hour mark here at the DW Stadium. Warrington looking for their first points of the second half. Harrison got the first points of the first half. He's close again. Just shy of that line. Daryl Clark, they won't catch Wigan out this time. Little kick from Walker into the arms of Harry Smith, and Smith will bring it away. Yeah. No, a fizzle out to the end of that set of six. A really powerful charge from J James Harrison. And you can see, can't you, there are players outside him, unsure, unclear what's going on. Well, there's Danny Walker just dabs it behind and it hits a, a Wigan player. Yeah, nine tries from kicks from George Williams, who's not here tonight. So he is just predominantly the short kicker of the ball to get up, to create try scoring opportunities. Danny Walker not coming up. With Williams would have. Maybe of course he would. But it, I'm looking at Danny Walker thinking, don't try and do things that maybe stretch and test your ability run with the ball that's his greatest strength run with the ball and take defenders on here's harry smith and smith lashes this one downfield dufty hasn't put a foot wrong so far this evening the fullback dufty taking on miski it's dangerous that kick from harry smith though to dufty when he's so explosively quick He's just running across field and really stressing out Toby King. Another lateral run from Matty Russell, stressing out the Wigan defensive line again. Getting through lots of work in the second half, Matty Russell. Minikin from the other flank, weaving his way towards the halfway line. Wigan ahead 20 points to 12, but Warrington enjoying a bit of possession at the moment. Can they convert that into something more meaningful? on the scoreboard four tackles gone as bullock plays the ball clark to vaughan vaughan just puts it all in cade ellis standing his ground eventually stops his progress fifth tackle and drink water is there drives a little kick in it's a miski miski letting it bounce and able to get away from his own try line Let's go down to the sideline, John Wells. Yeah, it's news on Joe Philbin, and it's not good news from a Warrington perspective. Fails his HIA, and with uh, the current rules not allowing the activation of the 18th man with just one failed HIA, it means Warrington Wolves are going to spend, well, a total of 33 minutes with just 16 available players, Bill. Well, that was how Joe Philbin's night was ended. Getting in the way of that strong run from Kai Pierce Paul, legitimate run from Kai Pierce Paul. Legitimate run, legitimate tackle. It just happens within the sport that we play. Four, four. Smith, Farrell on his shoulder, but Walker right in the face of Farrell. Brad O'Neill, Smith, drills the kick downfield. Dufty with the footwork. Matt Dufty. He's had a busy night and gives it to Minikin and almost gives Minikin a forward pass and Minikin is into touch and oh dear me. I think the tackle's already made, isn't it? Yeah. 
the tackle is already made. The, the second defender in pushes him over. But I agree with you. The decision by Matt Dufty to go back and pass the ball. There he is. At, I'm not sure whether he's feeling the effects of the last five minutes where he has had a lot of attention. Wow, that's a tough call. Wow, do you think? Yeah. He's still moving. They go with you and again, she calls. I'm not, yeah, no, they do, they do. I'm, I just, I'm, not, I'm not buying into the... Yeah. I think sometimes we're still hard moving. on referees he's still and decisions. Moving. He's still moving, I agree with Leo Marshall. He's still moving. Players have the power. So if it's oh, greasy and he slides over there, is, it, is he held? No, because he's not moved he's again, moving. has he? He's still moving. His body's not moving. <laughs> he might be sliding. The warrants are moving here. So a Wigan, that's riled Wigan, and that Bullock's ball's come out. out. Bullock's lost the ball. And the referee has whistled, and he's given the head and feed, and Sheffield is in the face of Bullock and Wigan. Chuntering a moment ago, celebrating it, but now I think they've been, they've been penalised. Steel. He changed well, his mind. He's had a call from the mind. touch judge. He's had a call from the touch judge. He must have fantastic eyes. Two tough, two tough calls. My God, that's right in the middle of the field. You can see Cade Ellis oh. and Harvey Hill all around the ball and the contact area. Contentious. Two hotly disputed calls by the uh, cherry and white section. Huddersfield have done a job on Wakefield and Trinity back down to earth after their victory over Wigan last time out. And there's another penalty, and this time it's gone against Warrington. Paul Vaughan, Paul Vaughan after the ball had oh gone. Days. Oh, it's the worst thing in our game to shame. give a, a penalty away when you're in possession. He didn't like the attention. I think it's Brad O'Neill. He doesn't like the heading. Tight contact. He gets up, smiling and laughing. But then at this point here, he's moving forward to try and rub the face, facial. Oh, oh. Oh, what are we? What are the sort of penalty? Wait, 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 wait. He's just had a, He's just had somebody rub the head on him on the ground. He's got up and walked towards him. And what is that now? A penalty? It's a penalty if you walk towards somebody with a little bit of intent in your eyes. Stop. You're wearing number ten on your back. What are you supposed to do? It's a shocking decision from Chris Kendall. As I said. The game that we play, things tend to even up within the 80 minutes. Yeah, Don't fork it up, focus on the individual. Oh, I'm not focused on it, it's just a naff decision. And what's been a great game, it's a fantastic game. It's one that Wigan lead by 20 points to 12, and Warrington know that they need to turn the tide with the clock running down now. They've seen plenty of the ball up until now, but then that penalty has given Wigan possession. That's good defence. It's young Adam Holroyd. Yeah. Brad O'Neill, Smith, kicks that ball Rick. towards the line. Oh, Marshall challenging! And it's picked up by Minikin. Not on in field. Not on field. by Marshall. Excellent kick. Just perfectly judged from Harry Smith. He just knows he's got to land this, at least one, maybe two metres out from the line. Dufty has to go for it, it's almost there for Marshall. Dufty didn't get off the ground at all. Marshall beat him to it, just couldn't reel it in. Bill, you talked about the amount of work Matt Dufty had had to do under the high ball. Wilco, you oh, said how easy mess. it was, That's and a there's mess. a mistake. It's a knee uh -oh. Penalty, he's given away. Harvey Hill, there or thereabouts. But just going back to Matt Dufty, the last two occasions he's had to deal with a high kick. He's, he's blotted his copybook, hasn't it? Not very subtle from Harvey Hill there. The young Cumbrian conceding the penalty and letting Warrington off the hook. Here is Sam Cassiano. Warrington desperate to get back into this contest. Desperate to get back into form. They've lost the last four and then League and Cup. They've slipped down the table. And having 
top the table. Oh, they're in Matt danger. Matt screaming for the ball. They're in danger of dropping out. Oh, and Drinkwater and Dufty exchanging words. Here is Drinkwater. Just a communication breakdown between uh, Josh Drinkwater and his fullback. Here is Danny Walker. Walker. Here is Dufty. Dufty puts a little kick in. Oh, it's good work from Fields. After a fashion. But Warrington will get the ball back. He had to intervene there. Well, he's had a couple of nice touches. I said he was screaming for the ball. They use a, a nice tight play around the play of the ball. Nine will come out, feed a half back. He'll look inside to the fullback. And he didn't give the pass. Good speed from field though, it's great positional play to get there and cover that short kick behind the winger on that side, forced to stay up because of the ball movement. The more possession, here is Ben Curry, landmark game for him. He's hoping for a landmark win, but the time is running out for Warrington now. They need something here, Fawn struggling to make yards. Cade Ellis has a hold of his foot and the referee calls hold. Fawn falls over the line. Referee says he was held way back there. Play the ball. Clark, Walker, Dufty. Back in field comes the Holroyd. Walker screaming instructions to his teammates. Clark, on it comes to Cassiano. Cassiano, the ball bounces up for Rashford. Rashford over the top to Dufty and it's picked up. By Toby King, oh, what an opportunity for Warrington. Oh, the line at their mercy. Yeah, just the skill not quite good enough. With them, a little bit disjointed with how they defended, but they covered so well. Look at French again round the back. Again, they scrambled so nicely of Wigan, and they had so many numbers around that. That's what Matt Peel would be delighted about. It's a mistake from Warrington, but five or six Wigan shirts in the frame. He's French and French. Tackle by Drinkwater and Daryl Powell frustrated as another opportunity is fritted away by his side. And now Field and Field bursting through and Field has the fullback to beat. He's got support from Farrell and Farrell will seal this game for the Wigan Warriors. Oh, it's a cruel, cruel sport. Warrington with the hint of an opportunity at the other end of the field. Wigan, show them how it's done. And it's Field who opened it up. And Farrell gets his seventh try of the season. What a good side Wigan Warriors are. They were under siege, under threat. And it looked like Warrington Wolves were going to score the try of their own. And what happens is you've got to be bang on defensively. You can see Steph Ratchford not happy with the outside, can't find the inside pass. But on this play, everybody's moving, everybody's looking for the ball. And you can just see the, the desperate attempt from Danny Walker. Defending out wide isn't usually that far away from close defenders, tight defenders, and he's isolated. He's defending next to Peter Matawi, who's been aggressive every single player this game. And as soon as Jay Field puts his foot down, that's the time Matawi decides to be passive. Well, they've been punished for that disconnect. Walker couldn't get anywhere near Field. Matawi knows that. Matawi knows he can't give up his inside shoulder. Well, he does. And that's the difference between these two teams here tonight. What Jay Field can do if your defence isn't switched on. What Bevan French can do if your defence isn't switched on. Warrington haven't got that. George Williams is watching tonight. He's the only man who can do that in this Warrington squad. And the attitude that ripples through the Warriors isn't, we'll just catch our breath, we've prevented a try. It's, let's go on, let's score a try. Harry Smith converts 26 points to 12, the scoreline. Liam Farrell, one closer to that tally of 138 for the most tries scored by a Super League forward, held by Kieran Cunningham. It's just a nice play designed to get Jay Field a one on one or even a three on two. It's so dangerous. A great support play from Liam Farrell. 
Liam Farrell runs 60 metres to collect the ball and gallop the, the last 20. When you've got such a good player, very much like Sam Tompkins, you know, at the start of his career, players anticipate those guys making a break, wanting to get the ball back off a short kickoff. Yeah, Harrison Jay, batting it back. You know, Jay Field's one of those guys, people anticipate making a break. Yeah, and this is a big period in the game, isn't it? In terms of points conceded, you know, Wigan conceded 20 points, second best. Warrington conceded 64 points in this period, 11. Well, they haven't scored in the second half in this game. 12-12 <laughs> it was at half-time, 26-12 it is now. Incidentally, uh, Liam Farrell has gone past Super Benny Westwood in the Super League forward try-scoring charts. Ben Westwood scored a lot when he, he was a back for a large part of his career, Bill. was in his Wakefield days, was yeah. he? Played a lot of games. That's a brave I think that's call, harsh. That. That's a brave call, uh, that. Yeah, I'm super calling Benny Westwood. He wasn't calling him out last week. Oh, Marshall has found some space. Marshall has found some space, and has he got the pace? Dufty managing to scrag him to the ground and then leaping back on. And that's it, Bill, transition. Wigan, Marshall gets up with a smile on his face. Wigan, as soon as they get possession, they're automatically, mentally thinking about attack. Wardle playing the ball, one of the uh, second-half try scorers for this Wigan side. This is a good response to the disappointment of their defeats last time out and a good preparation for their Challenge Cup semi-final against Hull KR who last we heard were level, I think, with Leeds. French, French, French come on, come on, come and get me. And again, Field screeching as a support player on a really straight, hard line. Does it so much. Liam Byrne. No fancy frills from the Irish international, making his 17th start in a row. Harry Smith. Here is Farrell now. Smith will dig the ball over the top. Field was just checked by one of the Warrington defenders. Now it's Russell. French manages to get hold of a boot. King is there to support. Set restart signal, but Warrington really haven't got any sort of foothold in this second half have they they haven't been able to to launch they've had a, a, they had a, a sort of purple patch they had a period of possession but just two handling errors from Wigan I always felt like that was as soon as Wigan got in control of possession and were tidier with the ball and kicked accurately like they have done in the second half I just didn't think Warrington can go with them and not only that couldn't I don't think can't see where the points come from Warrington and then the opposite side Warrington Wolves gave penalties away yeah. squandered chances and weren't clinical and weren't slick with the ball in hand James Harrison is down that's a worry for Warrington the big front rower who made his England debut in April against the French and now it's Dufty trying his hand and Dufty with a little chip kick over the top and gets the pass away to Drinkwater and Drinkwater will kick cross field and back they will come and it's batted down and out of play it was Minikin who was chasing but he couldn't get any control on the ball but you could see what he was thinking he's trying to angle that ball back towards the supporting and chasing Greg Minikin, it just bends away from him. I love the urgency of Liam Marshall, though. As soon as that kick gets put in, he's racing towards where he thinks it will go, where he anticipates it will go. A lot of metres made with ball in hand, but also the work he does off the ball, Liam Marshall. He's a competitor, always turns up. Offside here, discipline. There's a ball steal, sorry. It's five minutes to go here and Warrington are heading for a fifth defeat in a row in league and cup well yeah they were offside as well I thought there was one was off for offside but the ball steal either one it was a penalty discipline poor and a tidy second half build from Wigan isn't it it's been a tidy second half in every aspect Jay Field you know just a beautiful contribution for him to create Farrell's try well, a lot to like about Wigan here Go, go, go on. I think this victory will take them up to third in the table. 
And they'll have enjoyed this last 48 hours, 24 hours, will the Wigan supporters, with the Saints being beaten by the Catalan Dragons last night. And now this is the Cherry and White supporters, at least, will have enjoyed this. And their side back on track. Here is French. Is there more to come from this Wigan side? Is it more to come from Jay Fields? Fields eventually put to ground by a desperate Warrington defence who were clutching at shadows for a moment there. Shorrox, Burn once more. Golden point at Headingley between Leeds and Hull KR, 18 points apiece. Who will settle that one? Brad O'Neill looking to get his name on the scoreboards. Um, that was on the last, that'll be the turnover. Teammates won't be too bothered about that. They hand the ball over two metres away from Warrington's try line. He's probably entitled to go for that. Wigan then happy. Challenge Cup semi-final, yeah. good preparation. Yeah, good preparation what now confident. for Warrington. What now for Warrington? They've got a break. Super League takes a break while the Challenge Cup is in uh, the yeah. spotlight. Yeah. They've just got Wakefield to look forward to at the end of the George month. Williams is back. Just get George Williams back. George Williams is back, so that, that means that Josh Drinkwater isn't carrying all the responsibility of the attacking force of Warrington Wolves. And, let's be right, the first half... Warrington were good, were it not for a couple of lapses of concentration. They were good. They've still got a lot of experience with George Williams in there, but we've got Pete Mattawi, incredibly experienced, Cassiano, experienced, Vaughan, experienced. Well, they've got Ben Curry and Stefan Ratchford. They've been in and around international setups. They've got enough quality players to produce performances. Oh, dear me. And Ben Curry having to scramble to get that straight pass. Should get Josh Newlis back. No, that might be a bit distant, but they've missed his pace. And look at that, they're having to kick from inside their own 10. And Marshall collected on the halfway line. It's a weary, dejected Warrington side now. 12 all at half time, they were in the hunt. I'm going to come, Kelly. John Wells said about whether he question whether they were tired emotionally and physically from the amount of effort that they put into those opening rounds and the pressure that was on them to produce performances in that opening rounds. They were still top of the table after 12, but since then they've looked flat. And they've looked flat because of things they've done to themselves, the way they control possession, the discipline, the willingness to really push and defend aggressively. But also, I just feel physically and mentally they look a little bit drained here. And this will be the third defeat of the season at the hands of Wigan. Lost in Super League, lost in the Challenge Cup, and going down to, well, the biggest defeat of the three here tonight. As King puts a little kick in, and Meskey was hoping that would stay in the field of play to round off this performance. The invisible Matt Peets enjoys that. <laughs> Tommy Lulawai, likewise. Lots of smiles. We're up near the coaches here, a lot of smiles from the Wigan coaches. Not so many smiles for Darrell Powell. He's done a lot of scratching, I think every inch of his scalpel has been scratched over the last three weeks. The Hooter sounds. And Wigan back on track, having lost. This is the extraordinary thing about Super League this season. The Toing and froing, the yo-yoing, the, the unpredictable results. Last Friday, this Wigan side lost in Golden Point extra time to the bottom of the table side, Wakefield. Tonight, in the second half, they have looked like the Wigan of old. They have blown uh, Warrington away. 14 unanswered points to secure a victory that takes them up to third in the table. 26 points to 12. Well, they've answered the question, Sam Tompkins, Phil Clark. I think it's fair to say that shock defeat to Wakefield. Big questions going into this one. How would they respond? Could they respond? Few doubted that they could respond. They did respond. Yeah, they did eventually. They didn't. They didn't get off the gate. Uh, didn't get off to a to a great start. But I thought that second half they were they were pretty ruthless. There, Wigan. They they were clearly the the dominant team for the vast majority of that last 40 minutes. I think to the naked eye, it looked like Wigan are fitter, faster. A team with more stamina, and over the 80-minute period, Warrington couldn't cope with that intensity with which they played. He's George Williams as Daryl Powell.